Vincenzo, Tom, Colin, and Alex. Happy birthday! Okay. And Steve has an announcement about a key setting for you. Yes, we are going to be running a key signing party uh, tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. in Hall 2. Um, attendance is by no means required, but since I know a lot of people are here without email during the week, uh, I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to participate that, in that if they want to. If you do wish to participate, you will need to get to your email or get to the Anonymous <laughs> Archive and send me your key before the end of the day today so that I can get them all printed up for the key signing party protocol. Uh, also, please be sure to arrive by 6.30 sharp um, tomorrow if you're going to be participating in that because we are running a protocol that requires you to be there in person to verify the checksums, and I will close the doors and lock you out if you're not there at 6.30 because I'm not going to be playing any of these games about people uh, <laughs> bypassing the level of trust. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so who's ready to do fundraise? Yes. Uh, end of sessions today. End of sessions today to Steve Longish. Okay. All right, first off, we're going to have from the MIT Kerberos Consortium, Thomas Arjono, who's going to talk about uh, Kerberos. Probably the alcohol uh, So yeah, so uh, I'd, I'd first like to say thank you to the uh, folks at Canonical and Ubuntu for having us over here in Barcelona. A great place to have a, a meeting like this, you know, kind of a really better place, you know, but um, we're, we're really glad that, that, that we're here. Um, uh, what I'm going to talk uh, to you guys about today is this, uh, this uh, initiative at, at, uh, at the MIT Purpose Consortium. Uh, which we sort of dubbed uh, Cobra Bundling, and, and we'll see uh, uh, by the end of the slides uh, today you know, what we mean by that. Uh, for, for you folks uh, who, who may not you know, uh, dwell too much in the security circle, <coughs> uh, a bit of uh, history about uh, Cobra. Uh, it was an uh, MIT uh, project, part of Project Athena, back in the late <coughs> 80s. Um, the, the first paper was published in 89 by Cliff Newman. Uh, and a whole, a whole gen multiple generations of, of MIT grads and MIT staff have had their sort of hands in it. I mean, it's, I, I'd probably say it's you know one of the few you know early open source projects you know out there. Um, it um, now really ships with a whole bunch of uh, other operating systems. You know, uh, Apple uses it uh, in their Mac OS, their Red Hat. Bluetooth, of course, uh, and Microsoft and Sun. Um, you know, by virtue of Microsoft, I guess, you know, um, tens of millions of enterprises today use uh, Kerberos, you know, through Active Directory, which sort of, if my, if my numbers are correct, it's sort of 60% plus uh, upwards of, of the enterprise market that's sort of dominated with the Windows infrastructure. Um, so, so, as an authentication protocol, it has been hugely successful, and uh, you know, we, we, we still think there's a lot of room for Kerberos to develop, uh, which is why um, MIT started the MIT Kerberos Consortium uh, in late 2007, uh, so we're sort of 18 months into it. Uh, the number of goals, the, the number one goal for the consortium is to make Kerberos a universal authentication protocol. I can say the universal authentication protocol, but a universal authentication protocol. It's, uh, it's, you know, it, it has potential to be developed in, in different platforms. Uh, it could be used for uh, web security, it could be used for mobile devices, and so on. And again, very, very simplified purpose uh, you know, model for those who, who know the, the protocol backwards and you know, see. Um, uh, perhaps what's so missing from this diagram is this, this new addition which we call pre-authentication. Uh, so uh, the term that um, the term pre-authentication is used to denote the set of protocol framework and protocols 
to allow the client and the KVC to establish a common key pair before you run the program. So I'm, I'm running through these slides because we don't have So this, this is a list of the members of the consortium. The folks with uh, you know, bolded uh, type are the board members. So we have Apple, uh, Google, Microsoft, MIT, and Sun Microsystems on our board. Uh, the rest of the folks are uh, sponsor members, uh, and um, you know we're we're always looking for new membership, and you know we hope uh, some people might might join. Us. Some of you folks in the broader Ubuntu uh, community might might be interested in, in joining, either as an institution or as an individual. We're open to, to such options. Okay, so uh, so why bundling? Um, so uh, what we hear from our is customer base, uh, from people, folks who actually use our code base, is that you know there, there's still some lack of security out there. Some many organizations still lack this basic authentication authorization, and it's it's sort of uh, not ironic, but it's sort of worrying because you know. Uh, a, an, another trend out there in the market is the rise in this state-sponsored um, attacks. Right? So, so, and the reason why I bring this up is because it's you know, some of these organizations that have been subject to attacks actually use open source. So, so some of you folks might have heard about the Dalai Lama case. How many people know what I'm talking about? There you go. So, so and then uh, there's, there's GhostNet. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of other uh, U.S. Uh, and I guess uh, you know. No, I'm about the U.S. U.S. Um, infrastructure organizations that are being targeted by, by attacks, and it sort of highlights uh, the fact that you know maybe maybe we really need uh, to um, uh, make security more accessible to just the uh, folks. Uh, um, so, so there's also this other uh, set of unmet needs, a low cost solution uh, solution. So think uh, of third world. Organizations, uh, IT organizations in universities, governments. I mean, these guys can't afford to buy, you know, Active Directory, right? Uh, you know, uh, and and what what's sort of uh, makes it worse is, is um, uh, these guys probably barely speak English, you know, and they you know, have very little IT skills. So so you know, even downloading and installing Curve it is 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 painful enough, right? It's like, well, you know, here's the code, you know, go go and do something with it, and. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, reach out and say, hey, you know, we want to work outside our you know, traditional box and make the usage and integration of Kerberos into apps, uh, usage of Kerberos into different environments easier, particularly for folks who really do not have the skills or organizations that have like half a person of an IT guy. So, um, you know. So who can we help? You know, small government organizations, you know, plenty of small towns in the United States that can't afford, you know, windows. Uh, and in fact, with this kind of recession, a lot of these organizations are seriously <coughs> revisiting, you know, open source. Uh, interested in helping nonprofits and, you know, young entrepreneurs who, who get can't afford some of these expensive infrastructures. Um, also want to help enterprises. Some of our current uh, uh, consumers, you know, uh, users of, of our code base are, in fact, large enterprises who are also uh, trying to do uh, cost cutting and saying, hey, you know, okay, we're not going to spend, you know, we're not going to buy an extra 5,000 seats of whatever, you know, Microsoft, we want to use, you know, um, open source. Uh, so, you know, anyone with a near you know, zero IT budget is, is really what I'm thinking uh, of in this case. And, and it's not that we want to uh, compete against, you know, the Red Hats and the Ubuntu's of this world, you know, I think that MIT's mission is to bring knowledge to bear on the world's greatest problem. I mean, it's rhetorical. This, if, you, if you go and check you know, the MIT you know, you know, higher education website, you'll, you'll find this, this uh, mission being, being printed there. So, you know, we're interested in, in, a, in a free bundle that just works. So, so, you know, the scenario is that I'm an IT guy in a third world country, I download you know, Kerberos from an MIT website, uh, I download um, I don't know, LDAP, you know, and I'm, I've got like two nightmares in front of me, right? And I said, well, you know, what do I need? I sort of, I just want basic authentication, very basic directory services that allows me to, um, you know, add user, delete user, you know, put a user's email in there with with almost a default configura set of configurations and, um, and very simple GUIs, right? 
And, and you know, the thing about, you know, uh, the consortium really needs to address that. It's, it's sort of on, it's, it's our responsibility to help our user community <coughs> by making this easier. And we would use the word bundle in this case, because really it's, it's really a pairing or what I call combos, two or three co uh, components uh, that, you know, people can, can download and, you know, with very simple wizards or very simple GUI can just get up and running without having to, you know, deep dive into, you know, the, the curve configurations and, 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 and other aspects of the for us. So then you walk through and say, you know, I want to install MIT Kerberos with directory server, um, web server, or identity federation server. So this is an interesting one because, you know, where I sit, I've got, uh, kind of next, next to my, you know, room is uh, the folks who are doing uh, shib shibboleth, you know, uh, people know shibboleth is identity, identity federation. Uh, and on my other side is the Kerberos company. Okay, how come we're not using Kerberos to authenticate uh, within the ship that's identity framework, framework. So, you know, if I wanted to, if I was a third world university wanting to join the in common uh, identity federation network, I would need to download Shiblet and then I would have to figure out what authentication method I'm going to use. And the nice thing I could just download a package that has ship, that has um, Kerberos, and then with a few, few clicks, get everything running. And you know, in the future, of course, I'd like to go all the about in the cloud, you know. <coughs> Cloud computing is sort of the trend, and we really need to uh, look into that as well. So, uh, how do we make this happen? We can't do it alone, obviously. Uh, so, this is why you know, we're reaching out to different uh, open source groups and, and projects, such as uh, Ubuntu Canonical, Red Hat, uh, you know, Sandra folks and also other universities and higher education institutions. So a number of those uh, universities who are already members of the consortium have some interest. They actually have the already use Kerberos, again, in a different kind of a setup, different configuration. <coughs> and we want to engage those folks and say, look, you know, let's, let's make life easier. Because it seems to me um, the same problem is, is sort of repeated multiple times, you know, the same identical problem, every time somebody wants to install, you know, Kerberos or to install LDAP or, you know, Shibboleth, they have to go through the same pains and really want to sort of simplify that process. Uh, partnership with foundations and governments, again, you know, uh, the government is, is also a, a, a user of our code base, so, you know, we want to engage those guys. And, of course, our sponsors, uh, you know, some, some, of, some of whom actually uh, use our code base uh, extensively. Um, now, uh, just as the last uh, mention, um, we are uh, just in the process of releasing uh, 1.7, uh, which should be final next week sometime. I'm, I'm looking at the main idea. Uh, 1.7, and um, what we're trying to do is go into a, um, a release cycle of six months to nine months. So, you know, we're working on our 1.8 roadmap at the moment. We'd like to hear from you guys, you know, what you guys would like to see in 1.8. Uh, again, it's going to be six, six to nine months. You know, maybe maybe beta uh, in, in seven or eight months, and then final in nine, nine months. And that's sort of the, the, the cycle that we want to follow, so that it makes it easier for all the people who, who use our code base. Questions? Uh, okay. Um, so uh, as of one point seven, uh, we're we're pretty. Um, so why would I want to use MIT Kerberos over Hangar? And I get that question all the time. So, so you know, I've got a, I've got a, actually, I've got a real answer, a, 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 you know, a, a kind of answer. But but as of 1.7, we're pretty much feature equal to uh, Hangar. In fact, uh, 1.7 contains all the Microsoft extensions to Kerberos for those people who you know who know what those are. Um, Someone who is working integrating uh, Kerberos that um, creating Kerberos in the Linux solution, Microsoft doesn't seem to have a really bad habit of embracing uh, embracing stack extinguish, which I had a lot of trouble getting into, which I it's getting better. But isn't there something um, sort of you can do to stop Microsoft from changing specification every single time? So I'll repeat the the the, the, the punch of the of the question. Is there anything the consortium can do to prevent Microsoft from changing the 
specification every single time? Uh, the quick, quick answer is is no, really, because we, we are we are a we are a organization that's basically a higher institution organization, uh, and you know, we, can, we can ask kindly to our, to Microsoft, who is our you know, board member, you know, not to do things, but. But I would also like to say that you know I have been active in the ITF for like 10 years, and Cisco does exactly the same thing. So it's just that you guys might not be hanging out in the right working group. But if you go to the if you go to the writing any of the writing working groups, BGP, MPLS, you will hear the same identical complaint about Cisco. There is one more back there. Yeah, we're out of time. Okay, this ticket has expired. <laughs> doing more. 